in North America right now, the new president. Is that or isn't that something you'd want to talk about on LinkedIn? <laughs> um, next time, why? Next up, oh, I can crack right now. Well, hey everybody, it's Linda Edgecombe here, uh, having another beautiful uh, interview with uh, a colleague. I don't know you super well, but I'm getting to know you. Welcome, Melanie Dodero. I want to give you a quick, um, a quick I'll read her beautiful introduction, and we're going to talk about her best-selling book, The LinkedIn Code, which I uh, do, but have no clue what I'm doing. So this is why it's so great to have you here today. So let me just let me just give everybody a bit of a background on you. On you, um, Melanie Dodero is the author of the number one international bestseller, The LinkedIn Code. She's a speaker, trainer, consultant who has traveled globally sharing her knowledge on how business owners and professionals can use LinkedIn to generate leads, prospects, and clients. Melanie is also the founder of Top Dog Social Media, a digital marketing agency based here in the Okanagan. Yes. True? Yes. Yeah. Um, that helps businesses and professionals embrace social media, digital marketing, resulting in high engaged communities and increased profits. So please uh, welcome. Thank you for coming to my beautiful set, my, beautiful, my living room. <laughs> it's wonderful. I love thank it. You. <laughs> I, thank you. I love it too. Uh, so I just want to, you know, just uh, give our, my, my viewers a few, uh, a few tips. Mm -hmm. What is, what, when it comes to LinkedIn, and I know that you're socially um, successful and you, I know you understand all of social media, but you're, this is the, this is the, the be all to end all that if your expertise, LinkedIn. Yeah, it's what I'm best known for, and I focused a lot of attention on that because uh, a lot of the uh, businesses and the clients that I work with are businesses that sell to other businesses, so B2B. B2B, okay. And it is definitely the premier social network for that. Uh, it also gives you you know, direct access to many of the people that you want to be connected with that is a little bit harder to do on Facebook because people guard it a little bit more because it's right. a personal network. On, on Twitter, not everybody's using it, so right. it's just, it, it's, it's different. And it's, you know, for some people, it's not as fun as other social networks. So it's kind of the misunderstood social network. Okay, so there's going to be some business owners who are going to view this. There are going to be people who work for businesses mm -hmm. who maybe have the role of doing social media for the office uh, or business. If uh, you're on LinkedIn, so what would be the, I guess, how often should you be on if you want to keep connected? So, you know... It really, the answer to every single mm. social media question is it depends. Mm -hmm. It depends on what the goals and objectives are. And so, you know, there's two aspects to LinkedIn. There's a personal profile and there's a company page. Um, and a lot of times people will say to me, well, you know, Melanie, which one do I focus more on? The, the, the personal right. profile or the company page? And my answer is always the personal profile because at the end of the day, people want to deal with people, right. not logos. Right. So, um, you know, if you're looking at using LinkedIn to attract more business, to attract more clients, uh, speaking engagements, or whatever that might be for anybody who's listening, um, it's a great place to grow a network of very specific people. And, you know, for some businesses that I work with, it's maybe more building a referral network. So, for example, uh, you know, a financial advisor yeah. might think, oh, you know, LinkedIn's great because, you know, people that have a higher net worth are on it, oh. which is true. However, how do you just reach out to them and say, you know, they know they're getting a zillion of those from right. other financial advisors. So where those financial advisors could really uh, leverage LinkedIn is by connecting with um, an audience that shares the same target market. So building relationships with lawyers, building relationships with accountants, building relationships with others that have your clients, your ideal clients, as clients already, and start to build relationships and create a referral network. So there's many different things that you can do. So, okay, I'm, I'm gonna think, uh, well, I'm gonna take this time because it's my, it's my show. Um, <laughs> as a person who's a speaker and a writer and a blogger, blah, blah, and I've published some books too, if I wanted to build a network of possible um, clients who may, because pretty much everybody, every organization and associations um, hold meetings, mm -hmm. and my best to uh, write uh, articles that would be of interest to them, yes. or content that I would deliver. Uh, you know, when you're thinking about the content that you're going to share on LinkedIn or any pl social platform, you want to be thinking about who is the audience that you have and what would they be interested in. Right. I'll give you another example. So let's say, for example, you're a realtor 
And I see a lot of realtors yeah. using LinkedIn very poorly, like using social media rather very poorly. Right. They're posting their listings and all that. And you know, that's okay to do every once in a while. But if you're doing that all the time, people are just gonna ignore you. Right. LinkedIn is not the place to be posting your listings. Now, if you think about uh, the audience, the, the ideal clients that you have as a realtor, what are some of the other things that they might be interested in? They're going to be interested in anything to do with the economy, right. the housing market. They're going to be interested in, uh, you know, in maybe interested in staging uh, for a home, mortgage rates, stuff like that. So what are the complementary topics that you could talk about that are also going to speak to your target market? See, it's funny, I would have thought, you know, even, oh, so what's what's happening in your community? What's happening I mean, in your community, yeah. I buy a home, I want now, to know sort of. Now with LinkedIn, it depends on it depends on who they are. So, you oh. know, they might have a global, I have a global audience. Right. So I would never speak about what's happening in my community because my community, my audience is this much my community and this much the rest of the world. Okay, hot topic, so, hot topic. What's going on in North America right now, the new president, is that or isn't that something you'd want to talk about on LinkedIn? I personally think that we should avoid those topics completely and I'll, I'll give you a really great example. Uh, there's now a trending topic on delete Uber. Um, because Uber, Uber is... Oh, delete Uber. Yes, yes it's uh, a hashtag delete Uber and that's because uh, Uber kind of made a decision to do something that was perceived as political and perceived as pro, um, you know, one side versus the other, and that has, they've had a tremendous back, backlash. Whoa. So I would say avoid all controversial subjects, especially politics. We know. Yeah. We've been told for years, don't talk about politics and religion. Keep it that way. Sex. <laughs> you know, sex maybe, yeah, but no sure. politics or religion. On the network. Not on LinkedIn, but yes. <laughs> I, see, I, I posted an article for myself um, on LinkedIn uh, and, well, on my Facebook as well, but um, on why we'd, ra we'd rather talk about our sex life than our financials. Yeah. We are more comfortable. People are so not comfortable talking about our, our people's personal financial situations. It's, um, it's about sex. It's up there. Yeah. Right. It's crazy, <laughs> Especially right? if you're a woman. We tend to over talk about some things. <laughs> so what would be um, what would be the uh, the most common question? I mean, because you're an expert and I know that everyone wants to ask you you must get pulled out all the time. What is the most common question that you might get asked? Um, gosh, there's many. Uh, you know, one of them is, you know, okay, so I've got a LinkedIn network, what do I do next? <laughs> yes. Um, or, you know, a lot of times I'll speak and I'll hear, and somebody will say to me, you know, Melanie, I've, I've been on LinkedIn for like five years and I've never gotten any leads from it. And my question to them would be, so what are you doing with it? Right. And they're doing nothing. So what they're doing is maybe they're sending a nod connection request to somebody they've just met. Right. Or they're accepting one from somebody who sent it to them and then they're doing nothing. So I have a, um, you know, saying that I'll, I, I, I share a lot, which is, you know, you, you can't, don't just build connections build relationships. Okay. If you accept a connection request or extend one and do nothing with that, nothing's going to happen. Sure. You know, and I think that the online world has been an amazing opportunity to build relationships with people globally. Um, and it's really when those relationships go to the next level that they become true relationships. In some cases that might be picking up the phone. Right. In some cases, that might be a Skype call. In some cases, that's an in-person meeting. You know, when I travel to uh, other cities, I always reach out to my network of people, and I'm like, who's in that city? Oh, I want to get together with this person, this person, this person. I just came back from three and a half weeks in, in California, and I met with several people that I've known, that's that I've met in working. person, wow. and Let several me... that I had not met before, but I've known online for years. So it was really great. It was an amazing opportunity to we connected at a much deeper level, you know? We now that's can say we're friends, even though we, before we see, were I've Facebook never friends. done That's, yeah, I've never, well, I don't know that I, I think that would be, a, that's, that's it, that, I'm just thinking, it pushes my buttons a little bit, makes me a little nervous, isn't that interesting? You know, one, one of the uh, things that some people do is they'll arrange like a meetup. So for, for example, I spoke in uh, the UK. We're um, not talking about swiping. No, 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 a meetup. Like, so I spoke in the UK uh, a year and a half ago, and I had a number of people. Um, I've got a lot of British people that are connected with me on different social networks, and they seem to like me because I'm Canadian and kind of like my style. And so they were all excited that I was coming to the UK, and everybody wanted to meet up with me. And I'm like, gosh, I'm, I just don't have enough time to meet with all these people individually. So I, I set up a meetup in a pub, and I'm like, okay, on Sunday at 2 p.m., 
I'm going to be meeting everybody at St. George's Pub. Come on down wow. to meet me. And a whole group of people came. Actually, somebody even from LinkedIn came from the UK <sighs> office. They had contacted me saying that they wanted to meet well, me. That's... And they came out to meet me at this pub. So it was great. All right. So I have, you know, again, I'm being selfish because I got you captured here. And, you know, I only gave you a glass of water. But <laughs> um, next time, wine. Next up, oh, I can crack right now. <laughs> no, it's, it's too early. Right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you, you, were, you were saying that um, people get confused about profiles. Yes. Talk to me about that a little bit. Yeah. So you know, one of the things that often happens is people view LinkedIn as a resume site, and, and mm. it kind of really did start off a lot like that, right. and it's really transformed and morphed over the years to being so much more than that. And so most people, you know, have a profile that either looks like a resume mm -hmm. or it doesn't have anything at all in it. One of the things that I think is really the most important thing that you need to do before you do anything else on LinkedIn, and let's make sure you have a compelling profile because, you know, when somebody's thinking about doing business with you, what do they do? What do they read it? No, they Google your name. Oh, right. They want to know who you are. Right. And then they see all your social profiles and LinkedIn's the one that they know that they can find it the most about. And usually, that you know, there's a public profile. That's the truth. Yeah, you, know, you might have your Facebook blocked from other people to see it. But so, nine times out of ten, they click on your LinkedIn profile first. So it's essentially your very first online impression. And so I would say, what kind of impression are you making? Let's repeat making? that. It's essentially your very first online impression. Yeah. It's your personal brand. Yeah. It is probably the most important part of your personal brand, followed by your website, and then your other social media sites. Wow. So, what I encourage people to do is to create, obviously, a, a really compelling profile. Of course, have a great picture, mm -hmm. a smiling picture. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a client that I'm working with right now to help him revamp his whole, um, you know, online presence and LinkedIn profile. And I sent him an email yesterday saying, you know, would it be possible if you could go get a professional headshot and please smile? <laughs> um, because it's, you know, he looks so serious and, you know, there's a, online is, it gives us a taste of somebody, but totally. just a very small one, right? So there's a big difference between being able to see somebody's eyes mm -hmm. and a smile, not a long distance, far out picture where they can actually connect with you. Yep. Um, and then the other thing is, is, is if your profile is all about you, and of course there needs to be a little bit about you, it is your profile. But I take a different approach, and that's I make I, I encourage people to have their profile speak more to who their ideal client is. So for you, Linda. Uh -huh. You know, you're speaking um, at events, you know, globally and in, 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 in the U.S. and Canada. You want to be speaking to those associations. You want to speak, be speaking to those companies that are going to be hiring you. Talking about, you know, who they are. Yeah. Identify so that when they land on your profile, they actually see themselves in it. Okay. And it's speaking directly to them. And it's giving them a very specific call to action. So if they come to your profile and they see, oh, this... Um, this woman might be somebody that we're interested in bringing on to our event, you know, having to speak at our event. Who is she, you know, whatever. They want to be able to see themselves in it. And you can also have videos. Right. So yes. make sure your speaker videos are in there. Not a whole bunch of them, just one or two. Yep. Um, you don't want to overwhelm people and give yep. them too many options. And tell them what to do next. Do you want them to pick up the phone and call you? Do you want them to email you? Do you have a submission form on your website that you want them to, to uh -huh. go to? What do you want them to do? And as I sit here and you're saying all those things, I have no clue. I have no clue. Well, I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> the other thing is, is you, know, wow. you have a whole um, job I position. feel silly, but this is, thank you, this is it, great. This is really, really, really basic stuff, but mm -hmm. it's not basic at all. Because nobody knows to do it. Right. You know, and it's, it's just thinking about it a different way and not making it all about you. So, you know, you have a paragraph or two in your summary section that talks about who you are. Why do you do what you do? What made you become a speaker? What made you become, you know, an expert in this? Or why do you do this? I, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. I was speaking to this, I was helping this one guy who's a, a very successful financial advisor. And, you know, most of them all have the same kind of thing in their profiles. And, you know, we'll say the same story on the same target market. They're all going after the high net worth individuals. Right. So I'm like, tell me your story, like, you know, and I was just digging and I have, I have to keep digging and digging to, mm -hmm. to get that, which you're helping me with some of that with a right. presentation that I'm working on. We need somebody else to help dig yeah. stuff out of us because we kind of get stuck in that. And so I was like, why did you become a financial advisor? 
Finally, it came out that he, when he was seven years old, his family, his father had had a business and his uh, father lost his business. Then they lost their home and they were all living yeah. in this little one bedroom apartment. And he was like, I'm never going to let that happen yeah. in my life and to my family. And so he became very, you know, interested in finan finances and helping others and protecting others. Wow. So, you know, I shared a little bit about his wife's story yeah. and that made him more compelling than totally. the other hundred thousand financial advisors yeah. that are all vying for your money too. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing with speakers, you know, yeah. um, you know, for me, I, I'm the, the reluctant speaker. I never want to be a speaker. I don't actually share that because I, I don't just use speaking, but if I was going to be, you know, make my profile about just speaking, I would probably share that story. I, I never wanted to speak. Right. I got you kind of forced asked, into yeah. it, and, and over time I started to like it. But you can have an, an, an entire section on your profile in an experience like for speaking and like list out oh. your keynotes. What are the title? What are the three bullet points? And have you know two or three of them. You can upload your speaker one sheet to it. Oh, I've got uh, some work to do. Yeah, and I'll help you. <laughs> okay, I'll so help you. Okay, so <laughs> if anybody watching wants to get a hold of you, how do they do that? Top Dog Social Media uh, is my website. So com. Top Dog Social Media com is the best place. On there, you'll be able to find links to different social they find sites. Your book if they want? My book is only available on Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Top Dog. Marketing. Top Dog Social Media. Social Media. Dot com. com. Or you certainly find me on LinkedIn. I'm uh, the only Melanie Dodero on LinkedIn. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.